everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Stryker. My name is Lubang. Now, today we want to have a quick chat about navigating through prenuptial agreements. It's come up a little bit uh, in the last couple of months with some of our clients because you know I agree with them in the in the fact in in, um, in in the fact that they need to protect themselves if they are going into a relationship for a long term, not just with Ukrainian women or women, women from Eastern Europe, but women in general, right? I want to stop you for a second, Striker. You know, I'm very proud of your production, video production skills because this background doesn't look nothing like a green screen. Okay, back to prenup. Okay, so let's talk about um, how we can approach prenuptial agreements because we have got some experience with this in terms good of... Good and bad. Yeah, well, mainly, but mostly bad, isn't it? Like No, end up good, but started bad. Yeah, started bad. The approach was, was, uh, was bad, right? So... I want to start off with this uh, prenuptial agreement um, idea and saying this. If your idea of uh, throwing down a prenuptial agreement is to completely 100% protect yourself from losing whatever it is that you've worked for in your life, I don't care what age that you are at, it's just to protect yourself fully, you're probably going to approach this in a way that is probably going to destroy your relationship, right? The way to approach it, right? Well, let's, do we have some examples? We have got some yeah, examples. I, so want, I, I want to stop here for a second. Let's give you some bad examples. No, I want to stop for a second uh, from the beginning. Like when we're having a call, uh, we have probably the most uh, like asking, how do you call it? Frequent? Frequent asking? Frequent, frequent. Yeah, asking Like two questions. two questions. First is like, um, okay, what about the prenup? And, and I say, wait a second, we didn't find you a woman yet. We didn't even start the process yet, but you're already asking about the prenup. And the second one is like uh, how long it takes uh, until you're getting married. So it's kind of like two questions like that guy's asking because they mm -hmm. really want to know the answer. They really worry about it. But the prenuptial agreement, I, before, like I started working with the Western guys, I didn't know, like I only knew bad stuff about that. Like I really knew that this is agreement between man and woman to protect the man. Woman got nothing. Um, woman got like on the street. This is how this is viewed in Ukraine. And this is what actually kind of like happening in Ukraine, even though we don't really have a prenuptial agreement. Usually the prenuptial agreement would have like maybe some um, some poli politician, you know, some somebody. Somebody with cash, with, with money. Cash, yeah. And like we're usually dating like the lady 40 years younger than him. So something like that, you know, yeah. uh, th this is when we hear about that. So when I started working with the Western guys, of course, I get to know more. I get to understand that. And I understand very much, especially after the guys who are getting divorced, like it's, I would say like 70% of our guys who've been divorced with a Western woman, like, and they telling about their experience in divorcing and losing everything. I 100% support them on this prenuptial agreement. But you need to remember that you're talking with a Slavic woman who has the mindset the same as I had before I started talking to the Western guys and understand them. For them, it's a really, really bad thing. It's a thing that is like just from the very beginning of the relationship, putting them on a bad side that you're not serious about her, you not see that you together and that you don't believe in your relationship. Mm -hmm. This I want you to like before strikers start telling everything else, like I want you to have the seed in your mind that when you talk to a Ukrainian lady about or Slavic lady or like European lady about prenuptial agreement, this is how she see that, that you do not love her, you don't believe in her, you don't believe in your relationship and all you care is about temporary relationship and then you just want to leave and leave her on the street basically. Even though I know that all of that is not true. Yeah. So, so okay. <clears throat> Example, like you can talk about uh, how one guy were just rushed to talk about this with yeah. his, like, so he already met a lady, our lady, and he'd been really rushed to talk about it because it's something that was really itching and bothering him. He had him. scars. Yeah, he that. had scars, definitely. So he was very scared about that. And he thought that, you know, even though relationships were great and everything, out of blue, he just put this like cold water on this woman and she was like completely unprepared. So this was his the biggest mistake because he just put here everything that he wanted to say in one, I think it was even messages. And for her, it was like, she called me crying. She said, Lubachka, is it like the end of the relationship? I said, you know, for him, it's actually just the beginning. So like, what was wrong? Remember, like what, why, what he said? Well, like, like, yeah, when I say like, you know, there are scars, it's like, okay, so maybe like you went through that in the past. Okay. And like many of us have, okay. And maybe we should have done things differently. 
And so when we think that we should have done things differently, we think, okay, you know, I should have said to her that like, uh, I'm protected regardless, but it's, it's really not the way it is. And um, if you are wanting to date um, a woman from Eastern Europe and then she comes to the United States, like she is, uh, those laws are available to her. And so even if you did have a prenuptial agreement that says, that says, um, you get nothing and I get my house and all my cars and all my stuff, like they can just be ripped up in court anyway. In most Western countries, the judge can just rip it up and go, well, that is completely unfair. Okay, she moved to your country and now you want to take zero responsibility for her moving there. And that is the underlying key is that if you are looking to date a woman from another country and you bring her to that country, she is leaving everything behind, her support network, which is even behind maybe her apartment, her parents, everything. So you have to take responsibility. And as men, we have to take responsibility, right? And what comes with responsibility is authority as well. So you have to be able to say, okay, right, in this relationship here, I am willing to um, make some sacrifices in order for this woman to come over to, over to the country for us to have an opportunity to have a relationship for the long-term marriage, hopefully forever, have children together and all that sort of stuff. So the way to approach it is, Yes, I'm protecting myself, but I'm also going to protect her. Because if it goes to court, you need to be able to show that you were protect, you, were, you had her in mind. So it's not about thinking, mm, this is my house, I own this, uh, I own all, all of my cars. It's about thinking, okay, and this, is, this should be your mindset. This is not bullshit, chit-chat, whatever that you're going to say to her. It's that, okay, I'm willing to sacrifice something in order for the opportunity to have a relationship for the long term. Nothing is a given, right? There's no certainty in life that you may meet another woman. Uh, she may turn out to be a nutcase. Uh, you may lose your shit one day and throw something at the wall and she leaves and there's bad stuff that happens, okay? These are all the realities of life and it's up to you as a man to navigate these, you know, with some sense and sensibility that comes, you know, with being a man because we're practical, right? So the way to approach it is to, is to put something down and, and let's, let's forget about the word prenuptial agreement. Let's say it's a contracting out agreement, which is actually what it's called in New Zealand. A contracting out agreement. It's a contract that you write down and you say, okay, if our relationship doesn't work and we have children together, I want to make sure that the children can still go to a good school, right? That you are taken care of to a certain degree. That doesn't mean that you're going to get like two of my cars and half my boat and half my house. It's that there is something that is reasonable, that would be seen reasonable in a court of law for her. But the way that you approach this with her is that I want to make sure that you are taken care of if something happens to us or me, because something may happen to you. You may have an accident. You may get some uh, illness. You want to make sure that she is taken care of, because at that point when you meet and you're deciding to discuss this, maybe, well, say maybe it's before marriage, but it should be before marriage, is that you're discussing it because you genuinely want her to be taken care of. If you actually thinking about marrying this woman thinking if she if we break up she gets nothing right if you're thinking that at the start there's something seriously wrong with your mentality and, when it comes to... and this relationship like it's something wrong with this relationship from yeah. the beginning yeah what... you should you should like they say like the woman you divorce is not the woman that you marry that is true so at the moment like before this all goes down do something that is you know beneficial for her beneficial for you that if anything happens you can you can spit. but also if something happens to you Right, if something happens to you, you have an accident, you drive your car, you die, you want to make sure that there is some way that she can uh, go on living, maybe with your kids or with her kids, because you care about this woman. Otherwise, why did you invite her to come to a whole other country, give up everything that she has there, for what? For some, you know, a bit of fun time or anything like that? Like, as a man, we have to take this leadership role in this relationship, right? But when you're going to talk to her about that, this is like crucially important. That is very important. You need to make it sound that you're making all of that for her. No, no, I understand what you're saying, but not make it sound. It has to be beneficial. For her as well, yeah. right. But in general, like even when you start doing that, not like I'm not talking about actually what you're going to write in that prenuptial agreement, but I'm talking about like how you need to present this information mm -hmm. because at the like the most important is like the first impression, right? You can't change it. Like there is no no second first impression. It's like when you meet somebody, you already have it, no matter good it is or bad. And to be honest, like to change that, it is very very uh, difficult. So what's happening to you is that like if you present this information wrong. Like mm. then you will be in trouble because she will never sign up that you will be arguing and, and 
actually your relationship can even break up because of that but when you start talking to that you need to understand that it should be like a certain place and time and you need to make it sure make sure that you tell her that all of that you're doing for both of you but mostly for her because she's coming to a different country mm. she is unprotected she doesn't know the laws and you as her man want to make sure that she is fine this is how it should sound i don't know is it a bit tricky is it a bit like bullshitty but like it should be like that because she need to be feeling relaxed yeah that, like yeah you're talking about how you should frame it in the frame end. it at yeah. the very beginning what you're putting there i don't know how many houses do you have how you're planning to split like everything it's on you of course now like, we can't recommend you like that you need to give her like half yeah. of a house if you leave like two years 99 days like we can't say that but we what i can advise you as a, as a slavic woman is that you need to talk to her but on your level of understanding standing because this topic is super vulnerable and I, I think that on the west it's probably vulnerable as well anyway but mm. like in ukraine it's actually like it's actually a bad thing like and and actually people i know that it caused a lot of problems and you can think like what a stupid mentality like you're getting in the, in the troubles later why don't you think about them at the beginning i understand you they don't this is the difference this is the, and I, when I tried to talk to, like, when I talked to this lady who was, like, crying and saying, like, Lubitschka is at the end of the relationship, I said, no, like, totally no. Because one lady, actually, it was one case, was very interesting. She knew the lady who was married to a Western guy, and he, like, suddenly died. And this woman stayed absolutely with nothing. Mm. And so our client, our lady, she was first who asked about that. She was like, it was the only one case when she say like, can we, because they was living long time together, but they was not even like, I think married or something like this other couple. And so this lady got in trouble, like in her 60s, like she absolutely stayed on the, on the street, like she has nothing, no assets. And so, and this lady were asking like, should we, we should we sign something? Should, like she was already prepared for that and she was acknowledged about that. And you need to, to understand that like all you need to understand is that the lady doesn't know anything about that, and mm -hmm. you need to prepare her for that. Yeah, when when the um, and you guys that have been through it, you know, like I can sympathise with you as well. There's a you know once you get lawyers and all that stuff that it's in, involved, like money goes down the drain pretty fast, and neither of you get any of it, right? So you're best to at the start to have a reasonable agreement, then have somebody like the laws in your country or a judge or someone make an unreasonable agreement that goes against your favor. So it doesn't matter, I guess it doesn't matter whether you're from the West or from Eastern Europe. You know, obviously we're matchmakers that help guys meet ladies from Eastern Europe. But it is, it is something that you have to think about, right? You have to really think about this and go, okay, what can happen to you? Like you could drop dead and then what happens, you know? Or you um, could split up and then what could happen? What's the worst case scenario? Okay. Judge says you brought her to a country, you owe her half of your wealth, probably even more, right? So have an agreement in place that's beneficial for her in case the relationship ends. And here's the other thing, well, there's two things here that I want to say, okay? So if you have an agreement in place, a prenuptial contracting out agreement that is, that, that, you, that you write, that is not, that you write that it, that's available, that is there, that is not, um, overly beneficial for her to leave if that makes sense so she so i know it sounds really bad but you know this is this is the reality of it it's like okay so if she leaves she's going to have an okay life but with me she's got a really good life she's got a supportive man she's got a good house she's got she can drive a car around i take care of her kids i'm like a father whatever it is or maybe i am a father you know the problem is is in the west is it um without going kind of too far into this, uh, into this topic here, is that like some of the laws that are um, present at the moment in US like actively discourage like relationships to be together because there's so much, there's so many benefits for a woman to not be with the man and to have kids with a man not be with a man. The other thing that we spoke about, man, must have been about like a couple of years ago, was if the woman comes to your country, she can't work, right? So what is she going to do? Like an all woman are passionate about something, whether it's makeup, whether it's hair, whether it's clothing, um, you know, something. You can guide her in this direction and you can start some online business. It's extremely easy these days. There's courses you I'm can do. This video yeah. And so like for me, this was like a very like, you know, this is this is the way to navigate. It's your it. job. Yeah. Give her her own business that you supported with. Maybe you've paid for this business, right? In fact, it's probably better that you have paid for this business. 
So if in the event that you do split up and you do have this contracting out agreement that takes care of her and makes sure that she can get on with life for the next few years, uh, but plus you also have paid for a business that she can now take that, I see that little sneaky smile where you're like, hmm, striker, yeah. No? No. Oh, okay. But so you can now give her that business and say, look, I'm also giving her a business as well. I want to make sure that she's provided, providable for the future. Because men, we, as men, we need to be reasonable, okay? We cannot get too overly emotional and say, you are not getting this. There's no way you're taking the curtains from the house. There's no way you're going to take my jet skis, you know? I'm, I'll fight till the, till the death before you take my jet skis or whatever. And I, and I know, because I went through this, and this is all a complete and total waste of time. Think about it from the start, and you can save yourself a hell of a lot of a headache if you do break up, but also give her peace of mind as well, you know, and say, I'll yes, take care of you. but I think that this is the beauty of relationship with the Slavic woman that, you know, it's not going to be like that. Like, the lady, if you're a good man, if you try to keep, like, it, like the relationship going, if you're a leader of the re relationship, and ev everything that we, like, kind yeah. of, like, coaching you for, the lady yeah. will not want to leave you. Like, there is, like, the Ukrainian lady, because of the difference in our mentality, like, with the guy, we, we're not looking for divorce, as I understand, as the Western women are. Like, to divorce a man, like, you know, it's, like, really bad. It's, it's like, it's almost impossible yes there is like the divorce rate is super high now and people getting married super young and then they divorce yes but in general the core value of ukrainian woman is that like she doesn't want to divorce because her grandmother was always married for 100 years with one grandfather and her pa parents probably also been married all their life together and so it's not in their mindset that they're looking for like reasons to like unless it's something like you know unless it's like the, f the feelings are not there, you know, the, you have nothing in common and you just live like a neighbor. <laughs> it, is, it is completely another topic, but you need yeah. to understand that Ukrainian lady, like, that is the beauty of this relationship, but that you need to provide and take care of that. And what you said about this video that, like, give her some job and, like, the lady coming to U.S. without any financial, like, we call it pillow, financial pillow, uh, financial support, this you need to understand. And maybe we have to do, like, one more video about, like, a little bit talking about this one more time, Yeah. you know, uh, because this this is important and do not scare her with the production agreement but also do not neglect that because this is very important for you and for her as well I'll, I'll just finish on this video here and this is really 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 simple women do not divorce men that they see value in okay bottom line they are not they're only going to divorce a man if they see more value in not being with him right you know and a lot of times you know like the, you know we uh, there's a you know in the west there's a lot of complaints about you know 70 percent 80 percent of divorces are initiated by women like if you follow any red pill channel they'll talk about this right women do not divorce men that they see value in you know and it's all good and well to say well the women are like this or whatever you know they'll divorce they can divorce because there is no fault divorces which was initiated i think in like the 1950s they can divorce a man for zero fault he doesn't have to cheat he doesn't have to beat her zero it's a law that came into play right so she can divorce him the problem is is that when she divorces him she sees more value and i'm talking about money from a government uh that's going to give her money more money than to not be with him or maybe the same money maybe even less money but she doesn't have to put up with this guy that got overweight that got lazy that wasn't the man that offending was offending you like it's many it can be many well not, well, not yeah. yeah not well maybe offending her but not even offending i'm not even talking about abuse but but the man that is um he was not the man that, that she, she married had. But she changed him through a whole bunch of shit tests where she pushed them to be like this feminine man and he didn't push back. Okay, so it's all good and well to say, yeah, 80% of women divorce men. Good men, good solid men with value that, that have good income, that can provide a stable life uh, for her, that she enjoys, they have good, uh, good sex, good, um, a good life together, and she loves that man and she doesn't want any woman, other woman to be with that, uh, with that man. She will not divorce him, right? So that's the underpinned comment that I'm going to put on this video here. But when we talk about the prenuptial agreement, we want you to understand that it's up to you in the relationship to always take that leadership role with everything, okay? Don't wait till the last minute and let some government, some, government, some governing mm -hmm. state step in and say, well, you should have thought about that before. All that's right. right. We hope this video was useful. If you want to talk to us and take any advice about how to maintain your relationship, current or future, we are there for you. The link in the description below. We'll see you in the next one. We'll see you later.